Welcome to the Big Biz Show, featuring insight, analysis, and a lot of stuff that's none of your business. Uh, hold on. This is the Big Biz Show. I think it is their business. Making the markets work for you. Here's the man with the plan, Sully. Hey there, live from the Loft 100 Studios in sunny San Diego, California. Big Biz Show's on the air. Great to have you along today. Huge show coming up. And, of course, uh, right on set, we got Costa. We got uh, Greg Tartaroff, our executive producer. We got Howie right from the NASDAQ floor. What? Or here. And we've got the day trader trio. trio. DTT. Give us something. Yeah, you done that? Done that? It is uh, Howie Font, our analyst here, to talk about the market. Um, I heard that you were going to talk about the jobs numbers. Yeah, I think it's an important uh, piece of data that I actually... Um, you geek out on this, don't you? I, I actually love it, and there's a common <laughs> misconception. <laughs> <laughs> I actually love it. It's like, so it. Modest, like right? I, I, I have to admit it. I love it. I love it. Well, it's interesting because you're seeing jobs numbers that sort of belie inflation. So there's a good news, bad news story, which is going to mean higher interest rates, I believe, in the future. Talk about this a little bit. Well, that's exactly right. And we're in this weird situation where the Fed has its dual mandate. It's got two jobs, right? Mm -hmm. Control interest rates. Make, make sure that the dollar's, you know, worth more than the paper it's printed on. Sure. And the second is to maintain uh, right. full employment. Exactly. So, and by the way, both of those things creates price stability as a as as a, as a as a as a result of that, which is what we all been talking about lately. But the price of labor is one of the prices that they need stabilized, right. and people want their wages higher. But, but the more money they get, the more they spend. That's exactly right. Spending is seventy percent of our economy. The GDP, the the, the report card of our economy. But too much too fast with too much stimulation means that we get this good news, bad news story. We're, 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 we, remember we talked about the supply chain problem? Mm -hmm. This is a demand problem, right? It's, there's two sides of the story. Too few if, goods? Too, well, yeah, too many dollars chasing too few goods and services. So, so this, since I thought they were going to take a break out of interest rate hikes in November. In my mind, we're going to see an interest rate increase again. Well, it's 50-50 now. Uh, the chance so it was 94% against. And now it's 50-50. That's right. That's, right. That's the trajectory we're going down. And we were supposed to be done or maybe cutting by the end of the year. I think I said this last time. But now um, we're not going to finish up until maybe the middle of next year. Yeah. Uh, and, and I was telling a friend, one that I have, uh, about this that wanted to listen. It's also a geek about jobs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we, we had the unemployment rate go from... 3.5 in July to 3.8 yeah. last month. Yeah. But at the same time, we gained jobs, and I just wanted everybody to understand that it, that denominator is not based on all the people in the country. It's based on all the people working. So Yeah, by the way, there's people that are working that are looking for jobs, that has right. that number, and there's people that weren't looking for jobs that are now looking for jobs. So all of these variables affect that job rate. So that's why you can have the tale of two cities in one single jobs report. Yeah, and it might be important for someone watching that's watching too much TV and maybe hasn't been fully employed the last couple of years to know, you know, you've had a lot of leverage. Yeah. Wages have been higher. You've been able yeah. to go to any kind of restaurant and kind of have more demand than you want. You see this with the union strikes and things like that. But that seems to be slowing down. Um, well, and also you're seeing credit card debt. We're at a trillion dollars in credit card debt. <laughs> of rollover right. credit card debt. Consumers have no savings yeah. left. That w which was a difference during dur during COVID. So now they're they're living hand to mouth again. We learned nothing from COVID. Credit card delinquencies are approaching 2008 levels. Yeah, Let's pretty get your victory so. garden ready. Here <laughs> yeah, we go. Yeah, more good news from Howie Fun. Howie, thanks. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Ten thousand. Hey, Steve Brady uh, from Tempest Therapeutics joining us here. He's a, he's a CEO of a stock symbol called TPST. We met him a few weeks ago. One of the favorite guys that we have on the this program. Guy. This guy. Um, uh, is, is in charge of a company that 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 talks about uh, uh, effective and new cancer treatments that are unparalleled to anything we've seen before. Steve, thanks for taking some time out of your busy day. How you doing, pal? Doing really well. Thank you for having me back. Good so, to see you guys. So listen, will you start off with what we get the most email about you about, and that is how many treatments potentially do you have with 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 one or two sort of 
uh, uh, sort of therapies that you're, that, that you're putting forth because it really is remarkable. If you read everything in the news about you guys, read the website about you guys, you guys are a quite different uh, company, uh, bi biopharma company, biotech company. Talk about that. Well, we're fortunate and it's kind of a two leveled answer. Um, first is we have a portfolio, we have a pipeline of four different programs, right, that range all the way from the very beginning and a novel target that we think no one else is working on for cancer anywhere in the world that we know of, ranging all the way up to a molecule that we call TPST-1120 that is in a global randomized study in first-line liver cancer patients. And the reason I say it's two-leveled, right, is so you've got the four programs which could go in multiple directions, right? They're unrelated to each other. They're completely novel and new science. But then 1120 is turning out, and this is public, right, to have data in multiple types of cancer by itself. Last year, we got what's called a podium presentation at ASCO, which is the biggest cancer meeting in the world, where um, in liver cancer, and, and, and I'm sorry, in uh, renal cancer and another type of cancer called cholangiocarcinoma, we saw really interesting responses, but all eyes for us this year is on our liver cancer data that are coming in this part of the year. But what's interesting, if you look at TPST 1120 and 1495, the first line says multiple solid tumor cancers. That's a pretty big statement, and that's, that's pretty encouraging, is it not? Absolutely. I mean, look, in my career, if you get one drug that works, you retire and chalk it up as a win. I'm fortunate to have worked on a multiple myeloma drug a few years back that is now approved and, and helping a ton of patients, which is awesome. Um, when we went into 1120, you know, we had a wonderful hypothesis about where it should work. We picked three tumors at the top of the line, which were liver and kidney and this cholangiocarcinoma, but there were a whole bunch of others. And what is amazing is we're seeing positive signals in all three of them. Wow. That happens really rarely. Um, and the exciting thing about liver, and we've talked about this in the past with you guys, is it's a significant amount of need and it's an enormous indication. Yeah. You're talking over 400,000 new cases a year in the world. Here's my question for you. When you look at that, that arc of that FDA story, it shows that you're completed in phase one on, uh, on the 1120. What's next for phase two? Yeah, so the phase two are the data that I just, I'd say all eyes are on right now, right? Which is that global study in first-line liver cancer patients. So it's our 1120 plus standard of care compared to standard of care, right? In randomized data, that's, that's the gold standard in biotech drug development anywhere in the world. If those data that we report read out positively, our next step is a, is a, is a, a pivotal study. The, and, uh, and we seek to do that globally. Well, so, so let's talk about time frames because you know what's going to happen here. We're going to start getting email from a million people asking us, when can we get compassionate treatment? When does this start? When do we see it come to market? Now, there, it's a bit of a road to hoe here, but as far as, as far as first indicators go, I don't think I've ever seen a biopharma company or biotech company show these type of indicators this early on. I, you must have the same experience on your end. Yeah, as I said, most of the time it doesn't work. I mean, I think the last time I looked at the data on, on success from filing an IND to getting a drug approved, I think it was 12%. Yeah. So the fact that 1120 in and of itself could be a multiple indication therapy, it, it's extremely exciting. On the compassionate use front, that's a little complicated, right? Reasonable minds can differ there. Some people will say, you know, you should start that early. When I was working on that multiple myeloma drug, we had elected leaders calling for family members to get the drug before it was approved. At the end of the day, most senior clinicians who develop drugs will say, we need to learn more about the drug before we should do that. And that's what happens next. Yeah. The data support it will go to FDA, you know, this year, next year, and we'll talk about getting that liver cancer drug into a pivotal study and with a goal of approval. And 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 looks like yeah. sort of you, you guys are prepping for this, you know, for this format data for, for, the, for the rest of this year and the beginning of next year. Is, is that accurate as far as trajectory goes? Yeah, the liver cancer data, we've got it to this half of the year. I mean, we're in it. So hopefully we'll be in a position to, to tell the world a good story uh, soon. I mean, that's our goal, right? We, we sure. do this, these drugs work. Steve Brady, Tempest Therapeutics, TPSD is a stock symbol. You can certainly go to Tempest T-I-X, sorry, TempestTX.com. I, uh, I need some, some more <laughs> eye cancer that's going on here. Hey, Steve, <laughs> is there any other research that goes on during the process of gathering data for the existing therapies, let's say 1120 and 1495, um, that, that all of a sudden shows another option for treatment for another malady. Is that, is that sort of how these things happen? Is it as you're testing? Oh my gosh, now, so, we, can, now we can work on this. Yeah, so one of the ways that, that we learn is 
we'll go into, we'll say 10 different types of tumors can come in. The other way, and this is happening, we've talked about this publicly with the 1495 program, yeah. which is we weren't, look, we were looking at groups one, two, and three, let's just say. Yeah. We had a group of physicians come to us and say, we want to take that molecule and put it into this other indication. We think it could potentially help patients. So it can come from inside and outside. Yeah, I think, and what's interesting is that every time it comes from, when it comes from inside, it's another opportunity potentially for another drug for, 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 for multiple treatments. Uh, Steve, you, you look calm this week. I guess you're not chewing on Tylenol like you normally are. On a <laughs> no, remember, I'm an ibuprofen guy. Ibuprofen, sorry. Uh, Pop tylenol and ibuprofen. doesn't work. Just making I'm sure. I'm sure. in trouble for saying yeah, that, but. Yeah, you're the, the, either day you did Botox, because <laughs> the lines in your head, you look smooth, you look calm and collected. You, 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 you look uh, smooth as a gravy sandwich. Zoom Steve. has new filters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, we got to get you in the studio, man. I can't wait to talk to you again. We'll definitely talk to you next week. Stephen Brady is his name, the CEO of Tempest Therapeutics. TPST, go to TempestTX.com. Innovative, targeted, and immune-mediated cancer therapies. Doing the Lord's work, man. He is, man. Good Save guy.